are back once more with uh, Perfect Tattoo History. Um, we have a special guest this time. We have uh, Mr. Mike Fight from Gold Club Electric, Nashville, Tennessee. And he's up with us uh, this week at the new Cadillac Tattoo in, in Hatboro that we just opened up and came up to help us celebrate. So we figured we'd sit down and have a little chat with him. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, let's just get straight into it, man. I mean, how how did you get started uh, in this business, man? <clears throat> Getting tattooed in the early 90s a lot uh, after I graduated high school. Mm -hmm. And where was this? In Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. You know, uh, you know, getting tattooed here and there in an Akron. You know, I knew, I knew t some tattoo shops, not many, because it was still illegal in Cleveland. So... Really? Yeah. At that, at that time, uh, Cleveland was, you couldn't tattoo. So if it was out, outside the city, you could tattoo, just not inside the city of Cleveland. So you had to go down to Akron, you know, uh, Kent. There were shops uh, you get tattooed at. But after I graduated high school, I, I left. I left Ohio. I went to Virginia and drove my fucking car and slept on a beach for fucking three months. I didn't know anybody. Nice. I was like, fuck it. I was like, I gotta do something. So you're getting you're getting tattooed at the time. So you're getting tattooed. And then you, then you make your way to Virginia. Uh, and were you getting tattooed down there? No, you, you know what? In Virginia, it was illegal too. <coughs> it was illegal in a lot of places, yeah. man. Before you know, doing the shit up until uh, what was the what was the last state? Um, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Oklahoma, right? So I was getting tattooed, and you know, when I came back from Virginia, and I it was like. Working in a fucking iron factory, and you know, when I went to college, you know, and that was miserable. That's a fucking drag. Huh? It was terrible. I fucking hated it. I'm fucking. That was horrible at school. I barely even graduated fucking high school. Surprised I did. Uh, I had to fucking wait three hours after my fucking last day of high school to call my fucking principal to see if I even graduated. He was like, "Yeah, you did. We don't want you here anymore." Yeah. So. I, went, I fucking, you know, how the hell I got into fuck college. I was pissed that away. But there was a tattoo shop down the street. I would always go into this fucking tattoo what shop. What shop was it, you remember? It was Squirrely Skin Art. Nice. In Kent. And this guy, Sparky, old motherfucking biker dude, you know, and scared the shit out of me. You know, I was getting tattooed, but, had, you know, th this guy was, you know, pretty gnarly looking. Uh, it was funny, you know, he, it was cool. I hung out with him. I'd you know go to class. Sometimes I'd skip class, go there, hang out, and get tattooed. He tattooed me a few times, and then you know I had a, a few other guys I got tattooed by that you know were like oh you should you know you should get into tattooing you know you should try it out you know you like art you like this like that. Uh, I couldn't draw a fucking stick figure to save my fucking life. Yeah. So I got a job. A friend of mine, uh, Big Jeff. He tattooed in Akron, Ohio. Got me a job uh, at this little shitty tattoo shop, and he gave me a machine, a national. But he gave me one Puma Quick Change, a national fucking, uh, or oh, the Huck Spalding fucking red, uh, the, the big Frankenstein, the big box, Frankenstein yeah. box. Sure, the, the big red light. Two on the two tubes. And a, and a couple packs of needles and arm, you know. You know so you needed them. That's all. Fuck. And he didn't fuck. I was like, that's all he gave me. So, you know, I borrowed some ink. I did, you know, I tried a couple tattoos. Did two tattoos on myself. I was like, if I can make it, if I can make at least one of these fucking tattoos look good, I'll fucking keep going. Mm -hmm. The first one I fucked up. Of course you did. And then on the second one, it, it came out better. It was the way the fuck it looked on the, the flash. So I was like, okay, maybe I'll fucking try this. I was like, fuck, what, what, how hard, you know, what harm could it do? So I fucking was at this shop for a couple of months, and of course, I, there was no, I wasn't in an apprenticeship at that point. I was yeah. just fucking giving they, shit. Yeah, they just read they, they threw me in there to do tattoos. Yeah, exactly. And I, I've heard this story quite a few so times. So then I, I went into Squirrelies. I was getting tattooed by Sparky again. And I was like, look, I want to learn how to do this. I want to learn, you know, how to tattoo. Hey, you want to know what the fuck Yeah. <clears throat> so he told me, he's like, you know what, you go talk to Wes. He owns 
squirrelies. It was in Auburn, Hubbard, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Now, Hubbard from fuck Kent is a goddamn hour away. Uh, I drove up to Hubbard, Ohio, which is on the Pennsylvania line. I talked to Wes. He's like, you bring your girlfriend in here. You do a tattoo on her. He's like, I'm going to watch you. He's like, we'll see how, then I'll see if, mm -hmm. I, if, if, if you're worth fucking me teaching you. Right. So, here I am, one fucking machine, you know, with fucking, you know, two needles that I made the fucking <laughs> night before. Fucking no ink, no nothing, not, just that's it, that's all I had. Two tubes fucking that I got sterilized, uh, and some dry heat sterilizer. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And uh, got in the shop. And he's like, pick pick a design off the wall. So I picked this this sparrow from the picture machine flash with the cherries. Nice. And then I was like, how you know that I try to find the fucking smallest goddamn one. And I was like, how about that one? He's like, I'm fine, whatever. He's like, make a stencil of it, get set up, put me in his booth. I set up, you know, he stood over me, watched me the whole time. And I'm like, I'm sweating fucking I'm bullets. Sure. Sweating fucking yourself. bullets. Of course. Dude, I mean, I didn't know who this fucking, this dude's a biker. You know, this fucking biker's all through the shop. Yeah. I'm about to fucking, you know, hope to God I'm going to get somebody to teach me how to tattoo. So, I fuck, finally, I'm shaking a goddamn leaf. I fuck, run the first line, and motherfucker was just fucking gnarly. <laughs> so I fucking... Well, where did you put it on so I put it right on the top of her where I did my other my okay. second okay. one. So I was like, look, I know how to fucking tattoo that spot. I mean, I, I'm just going to die in a so bed. Lines, lines just not going lines in. Lines aren't fucking going in. So you're He's not, probably not stretching the skin. not stretching the skin. Yeah. I'm not, the machine isn't fucking up. Not, and I, Fucking nickel and dime in this fucking Puma for liner and a shader. Uh -huh. And he's watching me this whole time. I'm sure he's loving just it. Just loving it. Yeah. Is it? It's straight faced. I mean, just mean mugging. Mm -hmm. But he guarantee the motherfucker. I know he's laughing on the inside. Yeah. So, I mean, and I'm about an hour into this fuck tattoo. Finally finished it up. And I put the fucking and I, you know. Meanwhile, I'm putting a fucking dirty rag on you know on the fucking station. Oh, nice. Wes said stopped me in the middle of the tattoo, and this is one of the biggest things I remember. He said, when you came in here, did you bring your own fucking paper towels? I said, no. I said, I brought my machine. He's like, okay. He's like, so if you didn't buy those fucking paper towels, he's like, why are you saving that one through the whole fucking tattoo? He's like, you didn't buy it, just throw it the fuck away, grab another one. And I was like, okay. So, so, I, so I threw it away. He's like, then second of all, you're fucking, you, you've made the whole station unsterile now because you put a bloody rag on top of the station. And I'm just like, oh, jeez. I'm not, I'm not you know, getting... You didn't even know they cared. I'm not getting this job. I didn't know that they even get... You know, I didn't fucking know sure. anything about, you know, how to keep, you know, cross-contamination. Uh, why would you? I didn't, I didn't know anything. Yeah, why would you? So, I do, you know, I do the tattoo. You know, he looks at it, looks it over, you know. He, you know, picks up my, you know, tear, tear down, picks up my machine, looks at it, puts it down. And he's like... Okay, wrap her up and tell her to go outside. I'm like, oh, Jesus, fuck. <laughs> so he's like, he's, of truth. he's like, come back and come back to my office. And Wes <clears throat> had a little office in the back of the shop with the door. Anytime he tattooed, the door was shut. So I sat, he's come back in his office and I sat down in his chair. And I'm fucking just nervous as shit. And he's like, I'm going to ask you one fucking question. He's like, how many trophies does your boss have? What the fuck kind of question is that? I mean, have a boss. He's like, how many fucking trophies does your boss have? He's like, I'm going to give you a couple minutes to think about it. He's like, if you don't answer me correctly, he's like, I'm not going to fucking teach you how to tattoo. Oh, shit. And I was like, I sat back in a fucking chair, and I'm staring at the fucking ceiling. I'm like, dude, I don't have a boss. I was like, I don't know who the fuck's got trophies. Then as I look around the fucking top of the room, there's shelves around the room. And he's got trophies around the top. And I was like, oh, I'm going to count these motherfuckers. And I was like, I think I got up to like 20 something. So I was like, blurred out a number. And he's like, close enough. He's like, start tomorrow. And he's like, holy shit. 
Dude, I was like, couldn't stop thanking him. And he's like, he's like, you don't thank me yet. Yeah, right. You know, he's like, this is just the beginning. So that was the start, you know, 96, you know, I, I, you know. So 96, you get in the foot of uh, Squirrely's joint. Dude, there. 96, and then that was the start of it, like, really getting into it. And he, I mean, still, like, I mean, I was just straight up, you know, tattooing. You know, it was sure. like, I mean, but at the same time, I was still learning from him, you know, still. Mm -hmm. make, was you there know, anyone else there that was worth a fuck? Or? Yeah, there was a couple other guys, you know, uh, 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 I think at the time, Chad Koblinger was working in the Grove City shop. Now, Wes had a big thing. Wes was, you know, really sketchy about, you know, other dudes, you know, co-work, you know, kind of cohort against them. So he wouldn't let you talk to the other guys in the other shops. Right. Because he didn't want you to fucking, you know, gang up on him and take one of the shops. Right. He was he was real scary. I mean, he he fucking, you know, he's a biker. Okay. And he was the fuck didn't want to he wasn't giving secrets away for free. Absolutely, everyone's out to get him. Yeah, everyone's out to get you. Of course. The 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 probably one of the coolest things is when he took me to the Detroit uh convention uh, he took me up to Jack Armstrong, you know, I think Jack was still alive, he was getting pushed around the wheelchair, and yeah, I remember that days. he said, he, he was squirrely, introduced me to him, and he said, no more nickel and dime in one fucking machine, he's like, you're gonna buy a fucking shader off him. So, my second machine, advice. second machine was Jack Armstrong, All right. shader. It was like a fucking black to blue fucking V-frame, just the nastiest sounding <laughs> fucking thing. <coughs> Did he even have a capacitor no, on it? No, yeah. no, no. Yeah. And we were using flats at the time. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, it, it was just, you know, I'd be lucky to get something to come back in to heal the even So what, what, uh, how, 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 how many years did you spend there? I was there for... Almost two and a half years before I was like, okay, you know, I, I you know, I, I, I had to go, I had to, I had to see what else was out there. Because in the meantime, you know, I mean, my, you know, we didn't have any colored flash in that shop. You know, I remember when the first picture or the the first uh, Cherry Creek shit came out. You know, and then he got Cherry Creek. Well, it was all Spalding and Rogers and picture machine. It's all black. Did that mean you have any crow stuff in there? He had he had some crow, but he had kept it in in, in for him. Right. So it, you know, we could, we didn't get that that shit. You know, we we were, we had the fucking black and white flash. We had to fucking make up the colors as we went along. Sure. You know, uh, it. Debbie Lenz had a shop. It was artistic dermographics. Yes, yeah, her and John. Yeah. And I they, used. They, they were the shit. They were the shit. Yeah. So. Dude, I tried to get a job there, I don't know how many fucking times, but it was on my way to work. I would stop there almost every other fucking day because she had a, you walked in to the right and to the left, you go all around this big long counter, she had this little museum set up, like an old flash and just like machines and stuff. Right. And I would go there and I fuck the shit out of that flash to try to, to see the colors that, you know, yeah, the Zeiss you original. Get a fucking hint. So I could get a hint of what this yeah. shit was supposed to look like. Sure. In the magazines back then, it was all fucking new school shit. You, you know, not, not, I mean, people were doing traditional stuff. You didn't fucking get, you could, I mean, who the fuck are you? No, nobody was interested. Nobody, 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 nobody gave a shit about traditional no. tattooing then, man. It was all the melty crown yeah. early fucking bullshit. It was know? sculpted fucking lines oh, with a fucking terrible. five round. And yeah, it, it was terrible. It was horrible. Yeah, it was terrible. But I loved that stuff. I think just being around that picture machine and spalling around and stuff, I, I just, I, it grew on me. And it, like, I mean, that's the stuff that, that hit me from the, from the get go, man, you know? Like it's just weird, you know. You see, you, you see the uh, the fascination people have with traditional tattoos now, and it's like, damn man, nobody fucking wanted that shit. Dude. Nobody. And that's all I wanted to do then. Dude, there. You know what I mean? And it, you know, it it was tough fucking finding. Like you're saying, man, it was tough finding uh, people that could 
show you how to do that stuff. Right? Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, look, I mean, I had the advantage of having, like, a sale already, you know. Yeah. Right across the bridge, you know. Well, dude, and I, I can... You had Philadelphia, Eddie, and you had all these places around here that, you know, uh, they... They had traditional flash in the shop, but man, they never tattooed that no. shit. It was all fine line fucking biker shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's all people were getting. Well, I mean, luckily, you know, you know, all they had to choose from was that picture. So then we got to tattoo it. But I mean, I'm still using a three round and a five round, you know, to line stuff. No bigger than a five. We weren't allowed to use anything bigger than a five. Yeah. I, I didn't make anything bigger than five. So it's like, fuck. I mean, it, it didn't, I mean, it, you know, I'm sure now it looks like it should. You know, yeah. it's not fucking done now. The four, you know, like it is now the fourteen round. We, it wasn't like that, you know. And I had to cut acetates too. Like I mean, fucking Wes, I had to be there at eight o'clock in the fucking morning every morning. So I'd leave my house at about six thirty to get through traffic to be there at eight o'clock. You know why? It's because he had coffee that was called eight o'clock coffee. He said, "You know why it's called eight o'clock coffee? It's because you make it at fucking eight o'clock in the goddamn morning. You're gonna be here to make the coffee eight o'clock." I mean, it was some fucking gnarly shit. Like, I mean, I, and, and, it, and for the longest... You, all he did was do you a favor. He did me a favor, but at first I was like, this fucking prick son of a bitch. But then I was like, wait a second. After a while, you think, if I can deal with this frustration, yeah. this is teaching me to deal with the frustrations of the clients. Uh, and yeah, all the, the other... The customers are far, far worse. They're far worse. Far worse. I mean, it, all the shit he put me through, you know, was for a reason. And, you know, I'm glad I, I got the gist of why I had to scrub a bathroom with a toothbrush every other fucking day. Sure. You know, I had to do the, the, the shit because it made you respect it. It made you, you feel humble. It was like, what are you going to fucking do to learn what I know? Like, how far are you willing to go? To do something that you're going to make money for for the rest of your fucking life. Yeah. He's giving you the map to the money yeah. tree. That's all he yeah. did. And yeah. you know, you can't hate somebody uh, to, to for doing no, that. No way. But, but so, you're, so you're there for a couple years yeah. and you're like, I got to get the fuck no. out of here. Where, did, where does that bring you to? I'm out. So I go up to Dino's in Akron. That Dino D Cook? No, Dino... Uh, I forget Dino's last name. Was, Dino was, was Dino Cook. It wasn't like Atlanta. No, he's Atlanta. Like that, yeah. right? Dino yeah. was another biker. Dino uh, had a shop in Akron. It was called uh, Dino's State of the Art Tattooing. And Steve Sevenar worked there. Mm. And Steve Sevenar was like the motherfucking man in Akron. You know, dude was drawing his own fucking flash. Sure. Like, you know, I mean. He, it's funny, man. Nobody was like all these fucking. Like he everyone, does. it's just weird. Everyone now they paint, they do, they draw, they do. Man, nobody fucking did that shit. No. There was very few of us that did that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, and it's funny, man. Like don't the, the only reason I caught on, man, is because there was guys, uh, guys like me and maybe you know Mike Wilson or whoever. You know, like we'd fucking do like nice sets of flash, and they, people would see us selling it at yeah. conventions, and we'd be making a ton of money. So started clicking and, and that's what happens is but someone sees you making a little money doing a little hustle everyone starts yep. fucking doing it and that's how that but then man like fucking nobody was doing the road flash nope. man you know I, they were fucking buying you know product black and white production sheets and maybe coloring it in and putting it up right at the most well, that's what i was doing yeah, at I, the most i was getting you know the the, Sp the spalding and roger stuff you know and and, and using the colored pencils and stuff and coloring sure. it because, I mean, it was that's the stuff that I like to do. But when I saw, like, Steve Sevenar, and he was drawing these, you know, fucking, you know, it was, it was a little bit more new school, but it was, like, fucking just mean. Lots right, of right. black. Like, just tough ass. Well, he used the foundation. You just know tough I mean? tattoos. Was, you know he was using traditional foundation. Yeah, and it wasn't, like, new, it wasn't, like, sculpted lines, but it was, like, that tough, just fucking gnarly looking flash. You know, and... I got to hang out there with those guys for for a while, and then he opened up a shop uh, on the other side of Akron that I got to work in, and uh, and really fucking you know, you know, still I'm still doing Flash, you know I'm not drawing my I'm drawing my own stuff, but I'm not fucking tattooing it, mm -hmm. you know I mean by God like even with with Wes like you weren't fucking you know drawing your own shit, you were fucking tattooing. You know, whatever's on the fucking wall. 
And like that, that was you that. Got him in and out, dude. And even them, like even at Dino's, you know, they were like, "No, like you're doing the shit on the wall. Like you're, 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 you're this is what you're doing. Like yeah. you, 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 you don't do custom shit. Like you haven't been in the game long enough to do that shit. Sure. Like, this is this is it. You know, I'm fucking now. I'm, I'm four, almost five years in, and I'm like. Really cutting my fucking teeth in Akron. It's like fuck gnarly city, you know. Uh, watching other shops, fucking drop bowling balls on dudes fucking hands that stole from them. Hmm. Like, dude, I got made to watch that shit. I'm not gonna it's say a, who it's a, or it's where. A, it's a valuable lesson. But I'll tell you what: watching, getting dragged over to another fucking shop and watching the owner take the fucking artist and put his fucking hands on a goddamn uh, parking block. Our parking curb and drop a bowling ball from chest height, yeah. dude. I'll tell you what, that that'll make you fucking reconsider fucking skimming or stealing from the yeah, tattoo shop. I mean, I was fuck. I mean, that was. So a, you were horrified. That was the scariest yeah. thing I'd ever yeah. seen in my life. Of course. You know, and that dude knew it was coming. That was the fuck. I was like, fuck me. So I, at that time. I was, you know, talking to a few people in Arizona, and, you know, they, they, they were like, oh, come out, you know, come out, you know. I was like, oh, it's like, dude, I don't want to fucking move, you know. I knew a lot of people in Cleveland. I knew a lot of people in Akron. You're, you're nice and comfortable. So it's comfy, yeah. but you know. But you get complacent. I was like, you're I was like, well, you know what? I was like, I want to get closer to the West Coast. I want to get closer. You know, we're, we're you know, bigger, bigger city, different atmosphere. So I got, moved out to Phoenix, you know, here I am tattooing in artistic skin design, uh, which was uh, the owner of Superior, it was a Superior Tattoo Supply. Is it Dwyer? No, or? it was, uh, shit, his name's escaping me. So, Superior, anyway. so Superior he, he fucking divorced his wife. She kept all the shops. Oh, he was. Uh, he got Dwyer's the supply precision. company. Yeah, yeah the wires in Tucson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, uh, he was in Glendale, uh, so I'm working there, and this is the same shop that fucking Coleman started out at, fucking LeBlanc started out at. You know, all these fucking dudes started out there. Mm -hmm. You know, and I walk into the shop, you know, and and I'm still, you know, I'm back to square one. I'm like fucking still doing flash. I don't think I fucking did a custom tattoo, I swear to fuck, until I was eight years into fucking tattooing, where I even felt comfortable enough drawing-wise. You know, I'm still drawing the whole time. Yeah. But, you know, it, before I was allowed to, to do something like that. Right. You know, I was there for, for a, a few years, and, uh, <coughs> you know, then I just I jumped around to a few different shops. These guys now, eight months, man, they want to be dip, starting fucking back pieces. Dude, yeah, you can't, yeah, yeah the there's fuck. no way. I mean, for fucking doing Flash for that long, you know, I, it's not that I wasn't comfortable, do, you know, tattooing, you know, my own designs. It was like... It, you probably weren't getting a, a, a big call for I, it either. I wasn't. Motherfuckers can't, you know, look, they, man, they, they love coming in and picking off the fucking wall. They used man. to love it. Yeah. Now it's like they well, come in it, a now fucking telephone. Wall. Yeah, now it's wall. Here's paper. your fucking walls, this yeah. fucking magical item in their fucking hand, yeah. or they've got access to everything on fucking line. Yeah. Before that, dude, no one did that shit. They, they picked, they want, I want that. Yeah. They didn't fuck, and dude, the people who came in, it was black and white, dude, they would even be like, I don't give a shit what color it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my does it come in color? Yeah, oh, great. Yeah, does it come in color? Cool, great, That's awesome. Great. They weren't like, yeah. I want it fucking the color of my fucking son's birthstone. Like, you do fuchsia and yeah. um, how about a salmon color? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, fuck yeah, deal with that. Don't, don't be. So how long, you, how long are you out there and how long are you in Phoenix? So I was out there, bounced out there in between there and L.A. and California for <coughs> what? Shit. Another ten years. So I was out there for, you know, ten. So five before I left, ten out there. You know, I we got tired of fucking. You know, I, we were trying to make a move of whether we were gonna go, you know, stay in Arizona or fucking, you know, go out west, like move out to California. Sure. You know, I was like, I had already been traveling, doing you know conventions and guest box and stuff 
learn a lot more. You know, you know, get a name for yourself. Yeah, get, get, getting you know? out there, you know, trying to learn from other people and 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 uh, really trying to hone what I was doing. You know, and that's the thing. It's like I was, I, I wanted more. You know, and I, I was lucky to get the opportunity to even do that. Uh, so we said, "Fuck it." And I went and did a guest spot in Tennessee. I fucking loved it. It was. Fun, and you know I love the city, and I was like, you know what? I was like, fuck it. I got offered a fucking, you know, a job out there. I was like, I'm gonna let's move out there, you know, move out Where there. Was that? that was at uh, Pride and Glory. Uh, I remember at the man, I was tattooing a lot of people like from like yeah, Nashville and Memphis and fucking man, there wasn't fucking nobody in Tennessee that could tattoo worth it. Nothing, nothing. There was and yours was the first fucking. You were the first guys. That popped up out of there that was worth a fuck that I saw their tattoo. I was like, oh, okay, this guy can actually fucking tattoo. Yeah. You know There's what I mean? And, but that wasn't, I mean, that wasn't that long ago either. No, you know? it wasn't. You know? Five years ago. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. No. So when I got there, it was a whole different fucking, it was a, it was a game changer. You know, by, this is a fucking up and coming city. It's a big city. It was great. You know, a lot. It, it felt like the goddamn 90s again. Yeah. Like, I mean, of course, we had tourists. So, I mean, that's what made it kind of give the 90s. Like, we were not, you know, uh, you know, I remember being at Wes's and fucking him coming in to look at a non existent watch on his hand, like, yo, hurry the fuck up. You got 13 more people fucking waiting in the lobby. Right. You know? And that's what it was like. If I was like, oh my god, I'm fucking home. I like, fucking wish. I was like, here it goes. Like, great. You know, I was banging out fucking, you know, walk-ins. Banging out tattoos. You know, fucking feeling better. Getting to the groove of shit. I was drawing so much more. Starting to do a lot more of my own stuff. You know, and then just... It, I mean, it, it's so funny how, like, these guys nowadays... It's like three years into fucking tattoo and they're doing, you know... You know, their own designs or their own... Dude, I'm in 15 years in. And I'm still like... Listen, man. It's like, dude, you know, I know like not everyone is fucking handed shit on a golden platter. But I've had to fucking, you know, crawl my way up, you know, what seems like this fucking, you know, you know, never-ending bullshit politic ladder of tattooing. But, you know what? I, I, I'm happy that I did that. I'm happy... That I wasn't fucking, you know, giving shit or had the internet or fucking... I had to fight for fucking tattooing. Yeah, I had to fight to do shit like that. Mike fight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I enjoy it. I love tattooing. I still fight love... Fight and Mike fight. Fight and Mike fight. There you go. I, I love tattooing. I still do it. You know, everyone asks me, you've been doing this for, you know, so long. Are you still love it? I'm like... Of course I do. You have I'm to. still you, learning. You, yeah, you, you have to. I'm man. still you know, learning. You can't, you, you can't be putting out good tattoos and hate fucking mm. tattoos. You know? And it's funny. <clears throat> and that's, that's, that's where I think you see some of these guys, man, that, that they were really fucking good tattooers and you see their work slipping as because they don't love no, it. They, they don't, don't love it like no. they used to. You know what I mean? No. It's just a fucking job to them. No. So they're just slapping on fucking tattoos to make their fucking, you know, yeah, but make, the thing their, is, make their rent and I, I, whatever fuck. I think a lot of what's my drive is I want to make good tattoos. I've always wanted to make good tattoos. But now I've got an extra drive. I got this fucking three-year tattooer sitting behind me who's fucking, yeah. who's, who's putting in solid tattoos, solid lines, solid color. And, and now, the thing is, it's not just him. It's not just him. There's, fucking, there's thousands of them. Thousands of these fucking kids. So now yeah. you got that. So you, stay on your fucking so you gotta head. fucking yeah. stay on, on top of that shit. If you if you don't stay relevant, you know, you're gonna fucking fall behind. And that's what I think a lot of, you know, you know, older tattooers do. That they don't they just kind of almost like give up. And they yeah. and they, they bitch about these kids. You know, I don't, I don't bitch, you know, fuck it. You know, they didn't get the same, they didn't have to go through the same thing I went through. Oh, the fucking well. Yeah, poor fucking You know, me. poor fucking yeah. me. Let me cry myself a fucking river. You know, well, yeah, fucking. Fuck a lot of this, man, what, I say, and, and almost every one of these fucking interviews, I say this. These fucking guys, they sit around crying all the fucking time, but the, yet they've done nothing to change with the nope. times. Nope, 
Nothing. Nope. Not a it's damn not, thing. Uh, sorry, dude, but it's not. It's it's not fucking. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's not nineteen fucking eighty five anymore, nope. dude. You and it's I mean? also like not, you gotta. It, why wouldn't you want to? That, yeah. Why wouldn't you like? Doesn't that shit get boring? Yeah. Like, don't you want to try like do try some new shit different. or something? Dude, go. I try a new machine or try a, a new way of doing dude, things. That's or, why I love doing guest spots, and, and I think a lot more than conventions. Well, you guest get to, spots, you get, you, get, you get to see how all, all the other people are doing things see, in their environment. Yeah, you, you get know? to see everything. Like you get to fucking interact more closely with people. Like hanging out with you. Like you know, hanging out with you know you know, all the people that I've gotten to fucking work with over the years, like, it, you know, it's, it's, it's like, the apprenticeship has never stopped, you know, sure. and it's, that's what I, I think, make, you know, I, I, you know, somebody asked me the other day, they were like, you know, what do you think about your fucking tattoos, you know, you know, and I'm like, dude, they're, they're fucking, that, it's a tattoo, man, you know, all I can all do, all I want to do is do <coughs> I have the fucking, next one yeah. better, and fucking learn from Listen, it. Listen, bro, I have a fucking... I, I haven't met one person that's putting on a tattoo that's cured cancer or AIDS mm -hmm. or leukemia or some bullshit like that. And until it does, settle the fuck down. Yeah. Okay? You're not doing nothing that fucking special. You're putting on fucking silly fucking doodles on fucking knuckleheads. Right. So just fucking chill. And getting paid. And be grateful that you're getting fucking paid to do yeah. it. Yeah. All right? We, so fuck off with that. We get paid. Yeah, exactly. So it's like... You know, we got the best job in the fucking world. Yeah. You know? So I think, you know, with me, it's just, I want to keep pushing myself, pushing, you know, I've been doing a lot more, you know, Japanese-inspired stuff, but still kind of keeping it my own little realm. Yeah, for sure. You know, and it's fun, you know, I, I've, you know, I try not to break the rules. I, I don't do Japanese fucking back pieces. I'm not doing fucking crazy shit, but in, in, in that, it's, it's like different, I take different inspirations from different things that kind of you know, just put it all together and, and cross my fucking well, you know, fingers and it comes yeah, out. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that, and, you know, the good thing is, you know, you're doing tattoos where you get that, they're a decent size and you get the satisfaction of the, the completing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I you like... a fucking tattoo sitting yeah. around for fucking five years. No. You know what I mean? I've got it's enough of fucking worst. back pieces out there that are lined that fuckers never came back and got... And they're never gonna. Dude, it's fuck yeah. that. It's like, I, I like doing big pieces. I'd love to do more big pieces, but... You know what? Nowadays, I don't think people have the fucking the 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 smarts enough to fucking go through with it. You know, I mean, some you know, I get some tattooers that have done bigger pieces on and back pieces on, and it's them. They it's those guys who know like can't fuck this up, can't can't miss yeah, this point. You're gonna fucking eat. but the only one you're gonna do that kind of shit on is other tattoos. Right or collectors, and that's and yeah, that's exactly. about it. And that's like kind of like what it's gotten into nowadays, like. You know, I mean, I do, I do walk-ins every fucking day at the tattoo shop. I don't give a fuck what it is. You want a travel fucking armband? Let's do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. You want fucking script? I don't give a fuck. You want cancer ribbons out the ass? You want thirty butterflies? Yep. Done. Yep. Give me them. You don't want to fucking do them? Well, Send them to me. Exactly. exactly. Well, you know, most of the most of the you know the younger guys now, those kind of things come in, and what they do, they overprice them. They price this fucking shit out the door. Right. They walk so meanwhile, out the, door. the shop they're in fucking goes out of business right. because of shit like this. Yep. You know what I mean? And that's that's how you make your fucking rent is that shit. Right. That's the bread and butter. That's it. Period. It's yeah. always been the bread and if butter. If you put a clunky fucking marine bulldog fucking head every goddamn time no. or a pinup girl or a dragon, no. or, they don't want that shit, no. dude. Your normal, yeah. average, everyday person will come to the shop, either fucking pull out their Pinterest phone. Or they'll fucking say, I've had this fucking idea, you know. And, you know, the people who actually do, they're like, I've had this idea for like a couple of years. I really want, you know, to get somebody to draw it. You know, it's like, they, listen to them. Yeah. You know, if they come to you and they're like, you know, oh, I think I'm sticking to this or this. You can mold that fucking tattoo that they have in their mind to exactly what you want to do. Sure. You know, they want to, like, and I've seen people push those people out the fucking door. And it's like, dude, you ju you know, you just pushed out a half sleeve. Well, you know, you the easiest it. way to do that is just not greeting people. Yeah. Gre like, yeah. What happened to greeting yeah, a motherfucker like, nobody, when you walk in the door? I, man, I've walked in the shops just to see what the, you know, what, what's going on in different cities and countries, whatever, and I walk in, 
I can't get a fucking hello, nope. man. I was hey, just, how are I you? I was just in New York. Won't say the shop. Walked in. I was there for 20 fucking minutes. Walking around. Not and they look one, at you and they're like... <laughs> not one motherfucker yeah. said, can I help you? Hey, what's up? You know, you know, I'm so-and-so, blah, blah, blah. Is there anything I can do for you? Not a fucking word. And I was like... That's a bummer, man. Wow. That's a that's a that's, that's, a, a, that's, a, that's a huge bummer. I was like, okay, cool. Now I know what who you know who the fucking you know high and mighty is. Yeah. Like fuck you, right? Like, there's, 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 too many, there's too many uh, attitudes in the tattoo going yeah. on these days. Not enough people being humble. Not enough people Not going. At all. It's like you, you, lucky. You just be happy. You're fucking tattooing. Yeah. You get to do this for a living. Yeah. What happened to that? I don't know. A lot of it's gone. The ego took it over. You know, I I don't understand it personally, and I never did. I never will. Uh, exactly. I never will I understand never will. it. So I tell so every one of my guys, so be fucking happy. You're fucking doing this job. You know, get better. You know, you know, do do what you you can do. You know, don't be a fucking prick. You know, remember, everyone that walks in the fucking door is the one paying your goddamn bills. That's it. You know, period. So, Dick, you're in a, you're in Tennessee now. Right. And when do you start branching off to do your own thing? So, maybe eight months into being in Tennessee, I meet up with Chris, uh, my partner. He's not a tattooer, you know, which, which fucking, you know, I've, I've been in, in that position working for non-tattooers. It's not a fucking pretty sight. You know, you get assholes, you know, you get people that fucking, you know, want to run the fucking show. Dude, this, you met him, you know, he was getting the shop going, and he wanted somebody there that knew what the fuck to do. You know, wanted help, wanted help. You know, kid, you know, had great respect for tattooing right off the bat. You I mean, know. he's all fucking tattooed Dude, up. Dude, all yeah, tattooed right up. You know, he's all and, tattooed up. you know, and he's got. I mean, personally, I, I like the kid, man. Dude, he's, he, he's a nice kid. He, I like him. He, right off the bat, knew exactly, told me verbatim, I don't have the right to tell a tattooer what to do and what not to do. He's like, it's, I'm not a tattooer. I can't. I, I, I would be disrespecting them to to tell them what to do because I don't do that job. You sure. know, you know, so. He, I we partnered up, we fucking got this shit together, and it's been fucking wonderful. He's great, runs the fucking back end. He does, he busts his ass, you know, and he not does it ever. He to me, he respects tattooing just as much as I do, you know. He totally does. He knows all who all the old timers are. He knows, you know, I mean, we've got... Man, uh, the biggest thing is getting fucking tattoos. Yeah. Because there's fucking, man, there's these guys that fucking don't tattoo that own tattoo shops. You're right. They got a fucking tattoo on them. To them, it's just a business investment. Yeah. That's it. That's all. I mean, they want money. And that's it. And that's it. It's another one sucking off the tit of fucking right. tattooing again. Dude, so. he, Chris fucking is, is wonderful. He's a, one, of the, one of the best people I know. You know, I love him. He is literally like a brother. So His, let me ask you a question. If you, if you had to pick one person to tattoo him, right? Dead or alive. It doesn't matter. Okay. Who, who would you say is like, like that's your fucking go-to? You know what I mean? For like, uh, as a starting point. When you're thinking about doing, you know, a ta any tattoo, you're thinking, man, how would so-and-so do this? I look at a lot of, of waters stuff, like a, a lot of waters outlines, you know, and the detail that he put into that stuff. And I try to, you know, I don't try to mimic what waters did or, or you know, but I, I like the composition of stuff that he did, you know, mm -hmm. his girl heads, with his, you know, just the different aspect of stuff, you know, and I think I, I don't, I try not to try to dumb it down, but, you know, you know, I go through a lot of, like, for color reference, like, I, you know, Almond Dietzel, like, I love the colors that Almond Dietzel did, but then Eddie Deutsch, 
You know, I do crazy fucking color look out. Like, you don't go to my Instagram or my, my, my social media, and not every fucking tattoo is black, brown, red, gold. It's like, I go out, I just, I try to do everything differently. Like, I, I just kind of feel it. Like, you know what, on this fucking tattoo, I want to put pink in this tattoo somewhere. I want to do something different with this. You know, you know, I, I, I try to, you know, everyone's like, oh, I love your style. I'm like, I don't even know what the fuck my style is. <laughs> like, I don't even yeah, know, yeah. like, I mean, I just, yeah. I, I don't understand it. But people say they see it. Oh, I can you, tell you. It's just what you've been pulling I, off every fucking I, time you know, for the last uh, yeah, 200 tattoos. I tell you, you know, oh, yeah, I'm like, I don't know what the fuck that is. Like, you know, I, I really, like, you can see a style in there. Like, okay, cool. You know, then awesome. You know, I just try to do a good tattoo. But, I mean, I look at a lot of, a lot of, you know, the old stuff, you know, and a lot of the, the old Japanese tattooers, you know. And I, I go through all the fucking Horihide books and get inspiration from that. You know, get inspiration from, you know, you know, a lot of even newer newer tattooers, younger tattooers. Sure. It's like, you know, <clears throat> when people... I mean, you know what, this is what I look for. Is I'm look, I, when I'm looking through all the, you know, social media or internet shit or whatever... I'm looking for the guy that stands out that's not doing the same fucking tattoo that a hundred other guys are doing. Bingo. You know, like when I can see that and I, and I can look back at it or it pops up in something, I'll be like, oh, so-and-so yeah. did this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's what I, th yeah, that's what's missing now. Yeah. Instead it's, you know, it's a whole bunch of dudes ripping, ripping, off. ripping one, yeah, <laughs> yeah, ripping one guy off. Ripping Owen yeah. Jensen or Grim off yeah. with a fucking blown like out 14 so, round. With that being said, like where we we know where Tatooine's been. Sure. But we have it, no where, idea where, where is it going. Yeah, where where do you see it? Where do you okay? Where do you see yourself you know, in ten years? How many times have you heard this? Where would you and, like to be in ten years? I fucking tattooing. I know, but like, you know, there, there's, look, <clears throat> like, you know, do you see Gold Club as uh, this, this fucking fixture in tattooing for a long time? Oh, yeah. Do you we're, see we're, more than one? Do you see, I mean, sure, I, I think, you know what I mean? Like, like yeah, uh, we have two now. I, I would love, you know, do I want to expand to another city? You know, we thought about it. I mean, Chris is from New York, you know, but I mean, that's, that's, that's a major deal, like, I mean, that you know, is a big deal. But see, sure. the thing is, 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 is if we decide to do that, you know, then I have to go up there and I have to fucking, you know, I'm asking permission, you know? Of course. You know, I'm not going to go fucking rolling into fucking, you know, Queens without going to see Rich Five. I'm not going to go, I mean, even if I'm not in fuck Queens, I'm not going without seeing, you know, you know, the people I need to see to even fucking, you know, open up there. Right. But, you know... You know, I'd like to see the shop flourish, you know, where it stands now. I'd like to see the shop flourish and be where it's at in 10 years. You know, if it goes somewhere else, it goes somewhere else. If it stays where it's at, I just want my guys to be happy. I want my guys to, to make money. I want my guys to get better, you know. Sure. And that's it. Like, I mean, really, like, I, you know, I think of, in 10 years, I worry more, I think, about my own, my guys than I do myself. Oh, for sure. You know, I mean, that's sure. I think a lot of something people, happens to you. Yeah. That's that's what you're left with. Yeah. You know what I mean? My like, guys are the ones that are gonna have to fucking you know keep it going. You know, my son's 14. You know, he wants to you know he wants to be a tattooer. But they, you never like I never know. Kids, in two years, you might be like, fuck, of course. this is stupid. Of course, you know but I mean? exactly. if I don't have so. that, I all I have is my guys, and my guys are number one, the biggest thing. You know, I think about on a daily basis, making sure they're doing the right thing, making sure they're promoting themselves, making sure the shop's doing the right right for them, making sure everything's fucking. You know, they got everything they fucking need. You know, uh, but at tattooing, I mean, the fucking way it's going with these fucking tattoo schools. And I know I, this is a sore subject, yeah, but tell me that. but you know, it's 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 that kind of shit. You know that. May throw tattooing, you know, back into the fucking stone ages if we don't if we don't get a handle on it. 
Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, you know what I mean? we're gonna Let see. Me say, I'm just gonna say this right now, and I'm gonna, I don't, I don't, I'm gonna say this on the fucking record. This isn't my fucking responsibility. No. This isn't my cause. This is fucking Every everyone's time responsibility yeah. to get involved with shit like this. <clears throat> fucking cat's out of the bag, fellas. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're not gonna get it back in, but there's a way to fucking do this to where it's not one scumbag out there making fucking, you know, making money off a bunch of fucking suckers. Right. You know what I mean? Right. There's a, there's a way to do it, and there's a way not to do it. And there's one in Tennessee, which ain't going to be there much longer. Yeah. Not that, 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 another fucking clown. Yeah. You know, this, this, I mean, look, man, it's always been, this, this business has always been filled with really good guys, and on the other hand, the other half is fucking clowns. Of course. You know what I mean? So. But the clowns are... <coughs> but the are, clowns are uh, multiplying. The clowns are yeah. multiplying. The yeah. clown, and, and, and the other clowns that are paying them fucking six to $8,000 for a fucking two-week fucking tattoo school, yeah. that's even worse. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that there's... Uh, I'm losing faith in fucking humanity by the second. Yeah, well... Not that I had much I, to begin I, with. Right. I'm not going to even put it out there anymore. That, that... <laughs> fuck all that shit. You know what I mean? Like... I'll see you that's not the that's not the, yeah, that's not the important thing. The no. important thing is like I, I want to get into more positive things, like as right. in like like as of now, like who's the who do you think that is like one of one of the better tattooers these days? Like who are these guys that you think maybe maybe even be older, younger, whatever? Who do, who is it that you think keeps a, a consistent you know? All around, well-rounded tattooer as far as like ethics, as far as uh, you know, the shops or whatever you know how they run their fucking shit. You know what I mean? Who does it for you? Who does it for me? Who really has it on on fucking lockdown? Uh, well, you. I mean, you're definitely you're on the top of the list. I mean. I'm, you know, oh, thank you. let me blow the smoke up your ass real quick. Well, right. right. mm -hmm. I mean, I you know I've got a few friends that own shops that you know are definitely. Cause there's guys out there, man. Like, look, man, they need that fucking. You know, there's guys that are really fucking doing it. Right. You know what I mean? And there, and I, I, you know, my friend Tim, who owns Blacklist Tattoo in Portland, you know that dude, you know, has is has got a great studio. You know, he's got a great crew. And he treats us fuckers with fucking respect. And he fucking busts his ass still every fucking day. You know, he's well, got... You gotta fucking lead by example. You, got, you gotta lead. And, and you know? I'll tell you what, he does. He works his ass to the fucking bone. You know, whether he's sick, whether he's not sick, you know... The, Look, I'm one of them guys. I, I'll sit and I'll, I tell stories about, you know, um, when I first started and when this happened. And, but, but, and I like to fucking glorify shit. But at the same time... I'm still fucking doing shit to move towards the future. Right, right. You right. know what I mean? Like, so you can sit back and, and rest on your laurels, and that's all good. But, man, you got to be doing shit constantly in this. you got to keep up. Yeah. And to me, you know, it's not work. It's just, to me, it's what you do. It's, it, it's fun. Right. You know what I mean? To it me, I enjoy it. I love it. So. I love it. I love you know, it. So that's things I hate about the business, but you know what? You know, there's more things I love about it that make me just do what I have to right, do. When you get to sit down in a shop like this and you, yeah. and you get to fucking do tattoos and and fucking shoot the shit and break balls with each other oh, and yeah. fucking people come visit like today, you know, you know, a couple of fellows from New York came down and fucking hung out and you know you shoot the shit and you know you have that camaraderie going on too, you know. Right. What I mean? So it, it's it's a lot of things in tattooing that that make it what it is, but. Uh, Keeping the you know, tradition, it, keeping the, I think another thing is, is keeping the tradition of tattooing, you know, alive, you know, is another big thing that I think about a lot, you know, you know, not, not, you know, I do look at a lot of younger tattooers and I look at their influences and I do see a lot of, you know, older tattooers they look through you know sure you know and it, it is it's i'll tell you what it's it's nice to see it it's nice to see that people you know these younger guys are, are educated enough to when you fucking say what did mike malone do before he started tattooing they have the fucking answer you know not or, many or, you know not, not many. many not many <laughs> but i'll tell you what 
I've met, you know, I've met a few that, that do. Yeah. And, and that are, are fucking, you know, three. What trips me out is that there's like these fucking collectors no more than the fucking tattoos. Yes. That fucks I'll tell you me what. Up. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. And, and, and speaking of collectors or, you know, tattoo suppliers like, like Jimmy from Lucky's, you know, I'll tell you what, I, I, I love Jimmy. I love the Whitlock family. I love Bob, his dad. I love Mike, his son. Like, those guys have been awesome people. You know. Look, man, I, I can't say enough about that. Those guys, when when whenever there's something comes up, and you just say, hey, man, I need something. They what do you there. need? Anything you need. Anything you need. Anything you fucking need. Dude, Mike, we did, fucking, we did the Save the Babies thing. For, God bless you, Jimmy. Yeah. You're a fucking saint. Yeah, no shit. And, you know, when I first met Jimmy, I went in there just to check out the museum. He fucking open-armed, like, you know... He invited me back to hang out, you know, multiple times. You know, he's been such a great dude. He's, he, he, you know, and, and Mike Wilson. Jesus Christ. Okay. We did the Save the Babies thing up in up in Cleveland, the Chronic Tattoo, me and Tony DiRigo. Tony Tony did it. We all helped. You know, there's a bunch of tattooers. We did an auction. Lucky supplied all this shit for the, sure. for the mini convention. Mike Wilson engraved, you know, Jimmy built a machine. Mike Wilson engraved it. We auctioned it off. All that money went to fucking save the babies. You know, anything, you know, it's it's guys like him that, you know, really preserve that history, you know, is 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 what it, you know, it, it needs. Like, it needs the preservation. You know, tattooing does need a, a, need a benefactor, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because, um, you know, like, some of the guys, they're just... It's a bunch of fucking dopes in this, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. A bunch of fucking dopes. And everyone's you know? a fucking tattoo historian. Yeah, nowadays. But <laughs> anyway, with that being said, Mike, uh, I just want to thank you for taking the time to sit down with me and talk tattoos, and we'll see where you're at at another point in your life. Maybe we'll, we'll do this again in a few years. There you go. And uh, thanks, brother. Thank you. All right.